right. Uh, my name is Tiffany Wilkie, and I'm Dr. Cheryl Lewins, microtia patient liaison. I'm also a mom to a child with bilateral microtia and atresia. And today we have James Hermson here with Adaptive Eyewear Solutions for Microtia as our live chat. We're super excited to have him. And James, we have been in dialogue for a few years um, with some of our Iracles conferences, trying to connect. It just hasn't quite worked out yet. But yeah, we follow you on Facebook and um, we actually kind of connected over one of the ear community um, virtual picnics and we heard you speak again and we really wanted to help spread the information to our followers uh, with my and atresia and also because um, it could be extra helpful for those patients who do have surgery. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, so James, if you don't mind, why don't you give us a little background about yourself and how you got into this business? Well, hello everyone and thanks for having me today. Um, my background is construction and I've worked on hospitals, um, residential construction. Uh, most of my background is commercial construction, working on like patient rooms and nurses stations, things like that. And so we had to figure out how to build things uh, with the least amount of materials and make them strong. And so I applied those uh, those uh, skills to making microtia glasses and I call it adaptive eyewear solutions. And um, that's basically, I broke my glasses working on a construction job site and fixed them. And from there, I started tinkering with different ways of creating them for different applications. And that's how I got into making my crochet glasses. Um, well, didn't you say you like broke them on the job? You were like on the mountain with like nobody to help you for like a million miles away. That's kind of how that started. Well, I was working, uh, helping a, a, a friend uh, build his house and I was on the roof of the house. My glasses fell off my head uh, and I stepped on them and then I just started looking around for materials to put them back on my head so I could keep working because the nearest optical uh, dispensary or store was at least a hundred miles away, which would have been in Denver. And um, I was able to fix my glasses and keep working. And then I got a patent on it, started making sunglasses and kids eyewear, but then found that uh, through the kids eyewear that uh, working with the University of Nebraska Med Center, that the glasses really were starting to provide medical benefits and reveal some very unique characteristics on how they help uh, really active children and also children with uh, specific needs that com commercial eyewear hasn't been meeting. And uh, we were able to develop it to, to help the children with microtia and, and other conditions as well. So the microtia glasses do you want to so I know you kind of that's kind of like your passion project you know something you do on the the side um you know almost you know as like your nonprofit or you know slightly for profit or whatever it is but it's you know you really want to help families but why don't you just briefly explain like what your main like business is and how you got to do like the, the sure. loop? I will um so so I started off with kids eyewear and sunglasses, and then I found out that I didn't want to be a frame company, that I'm really a strap company. And this is the, the, the strap for the microtia glasses. And that's what my expertise is. And so now we have families send the glasses in, and then I apply the strap to them. And I have volunteers help me make the straps. And so it's, 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 a, it's a charity project. And uh, we just charge them $10 for shipping. They get a hold of me. They send the glasses in. We put it on, and we send them back. It's a real simple process. And, uh, you know, the, I decided that I didn't want to make money off the children with my crochet. And so we're doing it that way. And then um, another, another idea that was spawned was from that was, was putting straps onto surgical eyewear for dentists. And I, I was approached by some dentists who were having issues with their glasses staying on their heads. And so we started putting straps on them and they were getting relief uh, not only just keeping the glasses on their head, but taking the pressure off the weight from their nose and their ears and displacing it to the back of their head. And so they were actually getting relief from, from muscular skeletal tension and stress that wearing these glasses in for hours on time with them continually sliding off your face while you're trying to make precision 
uh, you know, incisions or uh, procedures, medical procedures, doctors and surgeons. So um, we started testing it and then we put some medical research behind all of this. And, and then we started working with different companies. So my company is Saw Hermson Strap LLC and I sell straps for surgical eyewear. That's, that's my, my company. And uh, the Microtia Glasses is, is a charity project that I do uh, on the side. And we've been able to help kids all over the world and the country, uh, mainly through the ear community, Microtia Atresia uh, support group. And that's where, where uh, I was directed to by a family that I helped early on who had, had, a, had a son born with Microtia. And I was approached by one of the families at the University of Nebraska Med Center, the optical there, and, and asked if I could make glasses for, for a son who had microtia with future Collins and, and stayed up all night trying to figure it out and, and then came up with an idea. And, and it was, to the family, it was miraculous. And then uh, I just kind of kept helping more families from there, so. That's amazing. So thank you. Do you want to, um, I'm just, this is kind of like the different stages of your design. Do you briefly want to walk through that? Yes. So in the very beginning, before there were microtia glasses, there was Dr. Donnie Saw, who was thinking about microtia glasses and creating prototypes and hoping someday that uh, there would be somebody that could build them for him. And eventually he ended up in Omaha where I'm from and together we, we refine the designs, but his design is the one in the top left. And you can see it looks like a medical device. And if you were a kid wearing that, it would make you kind of, it would make your differences stand out a little bit. So that looks like my headgear back from the olden days with my braces. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> big like contraption. And I do yeah. recognize the Baja band, you know, that's for their, their bone anchored hearing device, but you know, I love how that yours is, you know, clear and it looks lightweight, it looks flexible, and most importantly, it looks comfy. Well, and it, it looks like a normal pair of glasses. And, and when you're right. on, and when they're on, you really can't even tell that they're wearing a device or, or, or specialty eyewear, you know, it, it, it just looks like a normal pair of glasses. And so we were able to normalize what, what the glasses look like for these children to help them just be a little more normal or themselves or, or maybe not be judged as much by others for being different, those kind of things. And so it was really important for us to come up with something that that appeared to look visually please, aesthetically pleasing and not out of the normal. And so uh, the design on the lower left corner is, is the design that I came up with uh, and it, it was a good design and it worked. And, uh, but we found that if you put the strap all the way over the top of the head, it, the glasses went rocking back and forth and it really made them a lot more stable. And so, uh, and to, if the glasses are rocking back. It looks like, would it, so for the families with, you know, a child with unilateral microtia or bilateral microtia, does your design alter at all? It doesn't alter. And you can see here, from when we put the, the glasses on a, on a mannequin head, well, you can wear the glasses with an ear and you can also uh, adjust the glasses over the top. There's a couple of adjustments here. And so you can literally lower the strap up or down and you can have it resting on the ear, a, a quarter inch above, a half inch above or an inch above, whatever you'd like. And then on the other side, same thing, it can rest above the ear. So you can see this would work great for a patient with bilateral microtia, or it would work great for a patient with unilateral microtia. We don't change the design either way. Uh, it just and is works. That, is that the Baja right there? And this is an abutment for a Baja. Okay. And there was a family that asked me um, if I could include the hearing aid into the glasses. Cool. Who was actually wearing a poncho. And what we did was, uh, was create this little triangle piece. And it has little connectors that we 3D print. And then you can just snap the abutment right in there and then move these connectors to hold it into place. 
And so, so literally you don't need the soft band anymore. And, and, and this is more for, for the really small ones who have sensory issues and really can't keep it all together. You know, some yeah. of the kids, some of the kids can keep it together and they don't need these things. Uh, but the ones who can't, those are the ones that we really are trying to help and target. And so uh, after we put the, the, the and, and there'll be a picture of, of the patient that we helped uh, here in Omaha. And after we did that, uh, the little boy Carter started wearing his glasses and his, his hearing aid and immediately just started uh, acting, acting um, like more, I don't want to say normal, but like just being able to function. Bothered at, by it, maybe. Right. Uh, he, yeah. Just, just was. Being a kid. <laughs> got normal to it, I guess. Yeah. You know, the other thing too, um, with our patients, a lot of them, well, first of all, like after you have surgery, I know a lot of kids just don't wear their glasses or, you know, they've taken off one of the sides and it's like, you've had surgery and that can be, you know, you know, the ear cup and everything is something to begin with. And then if they're not allowed to wear their glasses, sometimes uh, that can be, you know, a frustration. So I actually, my son just had surgery and this is his ear cup, but you were saying that, you know, that's how that looks. This is his cool graffiti design he picked out. But, you know, when they have this and all these straps, you know, your adjustable designs can probably like go on this or above it, you know, kind of making it easier during surgery. And then even after surgery, you know, Dr. Lewin really doesn't want anything touching the ear. So, you know, the glasses need to somehow stay above the right. reconstructed ear because if it starts, you know, she definitely doesn't want those wire ones just digging in the new ear. And so anything, you know, flexible, plastic, soft is fantastic. Yeah. And we'll just have to experiment with that and see how, how what, one, what Dr. Lewin thinks and if she thinks it would be a good idea. And uh, all of these ideas were, were just done out of the necessity to try to help. And really that's, that's what we're here to do. And if we can help um, one, of, one of your patients who has, has uh, the ear cover and also get glasses on them somehow, then, you know, that'd be a great thing. And so. Well, I, I love that, that you just kind of customize them, you know, whether it's, you know, glasses, surgery, one ear, one Baja two. It's like, I love that you're so willing to work with our families because all these patients, well, we're all kind of the same. We all kind of have our different like twists and turns. So, you know, it's, it's great that you're so willing to help people, but I think we have a slide about your connector pieces. I mean, it's a pretty cool picture. Do you want to explain what those are? So yeah, those are the 3D printed connectors that actually made the glasses adjustable and um, um, take a pair of these glasses here. And so those are, are the connectors that are, if I can get them up here on the screen. Okay, yeah. right, right there you go. Okay. That's a good shot of them. And basically what that does is, is it allows you to adjust the glasses by pulling on them. And so you can literally pull on these and there's, it's just the right amount of tension that it'll hold them in place, but also allow you to adjust them. And that's what allows you to adjust the height above okay. the ear to keep it off the ear. Okay. On the ear. And uh, so, and then there's the same thing around the back is the adjustable pieces. And so it'll, the glasses will actually grow with with the growth of, of the, uh, the cranial structure of the head and so um, that's kind of convenient as well and so as a, as a child's head grows the glasses will just will expand with it and it just through time it kind of revealed its its, its property this is a a print that I actually just pulled out of the printer today and yeah. it's on supports and all these little pieces will be pulled off and then we'll use them here's one that just fell off. And those will be the connector pieces that we use for the glasses. And do you wanna, do you have your loops nearby where you can kind of show how you put it on and just adjust your loops? Sure. And so these are the, the loop glasses. And when I'm working with small hinges, things like that, I use these in my own shop because I'm tinkering with stuff. Um, and so uh, the strap goes around the top of the back of the head and it takes the weight off the nose and the ears and I'll turn sideways so you can see it just like that. And so when you're, if a surgeon's looking down or in some unusual position, the glasses stay on really well. And so the weight of the magnifiers is a problem 
pulling down the, the glasses off the ears and also placing, putting a lot of pressure on the ears and on the nose. And so the, the feedback that we're getting is that there's, they're getting relief by displacing the weight off the nose and the ears to the back of the head. And uh, that's another something that I've been working with, with Dr. Saw on and did some medical research and it's um, orthopedics are doing research on the, on how it actually gives you relief from musculoskeletal tension and disorder, things like that. And it can actually extend the, the, the period of time that a practitioner can continue to do surgery. So some people have to hang it up a little early uh, because of, of the chronic uh, muscle disorder. And, and I got that from doing construction, rotating my whole body. And I literally couldn't do construction anymore. So I empathize with the doctors and surgeons uh, that when you do a repetitive motion and you're continually in that same position, that uh, it can have a detriment effect to your health and your muscles. And so through time, once again, these uh, and, and experimenting and trying to solve the problems that they were having, we were able to help create some solutions and some relief mainly. And, and it's really about getting relief and, and, and results. And we're all about relief and results, so. Well, I'm gonna to have to make sure Dr. Lynn sees those because we need to extend another 10 years on her uh, surgical mm -hmm. life. We all need her. <laughs> but she's a, she's a young, young, young surgeon, so she'll be just fine for a while. Well, and um, if, if she wears heavy magnifiers, she'll benefit from them even being young, <laughs> right? So yeah. Well, and here's our family. Yeah, some of these cute little, uh, like looks like some of maybe your happy customers and you can just kind of see how so that's Carter, the little boy, and that's the one where we put the ponto in the glasses and he immediately started wearing his glasses. So cute. And I love with this cute little girl, like, you know, the one thing that some of our microtia families struggle with is, you know, the glasses, you know, it's hard to stay angled. And so when they get their two big ears, that's their, you know, biggest excitement is that they can finally wear, you know, glasses. So it's nice that even like before surgery, they can find ways to wear their glasses straight. Oh, here's some more cute kids. So cute. Oh, bilateral Baja's over here. And if you go back once again, I'll, I just want to share one thing real quick. All right, hold so, on. Um, I was going to show how we extended the nose bridge on, on right here. Um, the little boy. Oh, sure. On my left, the, the blue glasses. Well, you can see that uh, the nose bridge was cut in half and then we, we extended it with a piece of uh, a, a piece of plastic, I guess you'd call it. And I dyed that piece of plastic. But basically, um, you know, when I was approached to make the glasses for this, for this, um, for Jonathan, uh, my friend Jonathan, I really didn't know what I was going to do and didn't really think we would find a solution. And so those are the things that from my crochet where we've been approached to try and help other kids and we've been able to do that. So um, and it always makes my day when we're able to help, help one of the little ones. Yeah, for to, sure. I'm oh. definitely making their family's day. I know that. <laughs> okay. So this is your, do you want to tell us a little about, this is like taken right off of your website. This so is from my website and okay. basically spokeeyes.com is, um, it started off as a kid's eyewear sunglass company. And I called it spoke eyes because the sunglasses were made with spokes uh, from, from a bicycle. And I'll just show a, a pair real quick. And you can see there's a purple spoke inside that glasses. And uh, so all these glasses have spokes on them. And that's why the company was called Spoke Eyes. But since, since we specialize in microtia and uh, surgical eyewear, the company is now called Saw Hermson Strap LLC. But I'm using the same domain for right now. Uh, and the update website has been updated, so. Great, and I love how it just says, you know, it talks about your loops here, your microtia glasses, and then your sunglasses. Um, and specifically, this is your microtia page, which is so cool that like, you know, you as a glass helper has like its own microtia page. Um, let me see, oh, that must be the end. I'm just gonna stop sharing that, cool. Um, so that's cool, but you said people can go to your website or 
um, maybe better yet, your Facebook page? Adaptive Eyewear Solutions is a great okay. place because I actually occasionally post things there, or more often I'll post updates. Um, families will get a hold of me there. Sometimes after uh, after I fix the glasses, I'll po post pictures of the glasses after I after I put the, the microtia adapter on, and they'll um, they get to see their glasses sometimes on my Facebook page before they even get them in their hands. So it's <laughs> kind of cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool, yeah. And so oftentimes I'll take pictures of, or if I'm doing something new and different, I'll, I'll try and put something on the, on the Facebook Adaptive Eyewear Solutions page. Okay. And again, um, I know our families will ask this about how much is it for you to put an adapter on their eyeglasses? Well, if, if you send me the glasses with $10 for shipping, I'll put a strap on there. So it's, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a charity and it's, it's, Maybe someday it'll be a nonprofit. I just um, haven't had the resources to create a nonprofit to do this for the kids. But um, yeah, it's it's, it's, a uh, it's a great, project for you. I love it. It's a great it's a great it's a great hobby, and uh, you know I, I would prefer to spend my time doing that than than being on the golf course. You might say I used to ride my bike a lot, and I don't do that as much as I used to. Um, so I it's um. It's something that I have time to to help the kids with, and uh, you know, if I ever go get overwhelmed, then I'll have to figure out something how to support it in a different way. But at this point, with with a few volunteers and uh, just a little of of my time, I'm able to do that. So, well, that's amazing, and I know that's like why Dr. Lewin wanted to definitely you know reach out to you when she heard like but your big heart just wanting to help these families. And that's kind of like the, you know, the goal of her oracles, you know, as well. So we really commend you for that, you know, not even, you know, really knowing these kids, but wanting to help them. So we thank you. Well, we have something in common that way. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, you know, I, I'm the, for, for the materials and how much it really costs me to create that thing. Um, it's, I'm able to, to, to do that. You know, it, I wouldn't be able to perform ear surgeries and, and do that, you know, for $10 um, with, with the expertise it requires the, the, the technology, the, you know, the staff, everything, but, but these glasses, honestly, they're, they're so simple and the material cost is, is, um, is not that, that much for me to be able to, to uh, give back, you might say. And, and I've always been a volunteer on some level in the community where I'm from in Nebraska. And uh, so now we're able to put Nebraska on the map by sharing these classes with the world. And um, I figured that my goal wasn't going to be to make, make money, a million dollars off the kids. However, I do need to commercialize something. And that's where the surgical strap has come in. Is All right. So the Microtia families get your glasses here for your $10 and go tell your doctor friends about the loops. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Well, and, and I'm supplying, I'm supplying some of the loop manufacturers who are buying in bulk too. So I'm, I'm a supplier or you might say a wholesaler to, to a loop company that, um, that buys in bulk. So it's nice. It's nice. Well, I appreciate you sharing your um, wisdom and about, you know, your, um, your, your side business today. It's been really helpful and we look forward to getting this information out to our families. I'm glad, I'm glad to share and have you share. So thanks for having me today, Tiffany. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Good. Lewin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewin. All right. Okay, for sure. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.